on NBC. Fourteen-time Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps is poised to become the first male swimmer to make four U.S. Olympic teams. But the two-time defending Olympic champion of the 400 IM is being threatened in this event, as well as others, by that man, Ryan Lochte, who says it is his time to shine at Olympic glory. They go head-to-head -head in our first final of the 2012 U.S. Olympic swimming trials next. They come to Omaha to add to a legacy of American excellence. Mark, spit, go in, ah. To make their own mark. Missy Franklin coming home. Shatter the American record. Get world record for Sony in Olympic gold. Some swim to get back to the stage of their most rewarding triumphs. While others position themselves for even greater heights. And then there's the one who is already unmatched, but still with more history to write. Phelps needs to get by Kevin. He gets it done again. He did it. Yes. He's going to stand alone, the greatest Olympic champion of all time. It's the trials in Omaha that were the ultimate goal in London. NBC Sports welcomes you to the 2012 U.S. Olympic Swimming Trials presented by BMW. And we welcome you inside the Century Link Center in Omaha, close to 13,000 jam-packed in anticipation of these pressure-packed trials day one, which will determine the team that heads to London next month. The top two finishers in our three finals tonight will become the first members of that team in a huge, thunderous roar comes up as Ryan Lucky and Michael Phelps march out in anticipation of the final of the men's 400 IM. And there is Phelps with 16 Olympic medals. In the last two games, 14 of them gold, a perfect 8 for 8 four years ago in Beijing. But as we mentioned, he is definitely being threatened and really the best overall swimmer in the world after Beijing has been Ryan Lochte, who is the two-time defending world champion in this event. Since Phelps stepped away from the event. Lochte has taken a hold of it and has gripped it tight. Dan Hicks with Roddy Games and Andrea Kramer. And Roddy, I can't imagine a better final to start things off with than the Fort Diary. It's going to be a great, great event between two huge champions. Let's set the lanes for you. Lane one is Andrew Gemmel, open water specialist, better in the 1500, his first trials final. Lane two is Tyler Harris, 12th in the trials four years ago. A UNC grad. Chase Kalish, 6 feet 6, 18 years old, trains with Michael Phelps and his coach Bob Bowman at the North Baltimore Aquatic Club. Had a good swim to make this final. He's right next to Ryan Lochte, who has cranked up the train from four years ago and has poised to shine. And right next to Michael Phelps in lane five, they are the top two qualifiers, but Lochte had nearly a four-second faster time than Phelps who swore that he wasn't going to swim this event four years ago after he got his final gold in it. Tyler Clary in lane six, the other wild card who could sneak in there in the top two if either Lochte or Phelps faltered. Lane seven is Michael Weiss, who was third at the NCAAs this year. And in lane eight is Robert Margallis, third in the 08 trials behind Phelps and Lochte. So based on what you saw earlier today in the prelims, Rowdy, how do you handicap this? It really comes down, Dan, to who proves the most. If Phelps was at, say, 60%, Lochte was, say, 85%, that may explain that four-second gap. But if they were both 60 or 70 or 80%, Lochte is going to win this race. Because four seconds is a lot, even though it's a preliminary. So the lanes work from the top to the bottom, one to eight. Lochte, the top qualifier, earns lane four. Phelps below him in lane five, and keep an eye on Clary. Those are the three principles in here, although we expect Lochte and Phelps to go one-two. Still a little worried about Phelps and his legs. You know, if he's racing to win, does that jeopardize him making team? What I mean by that is if he goes out with Lochte and just 
really hammers the legs that front half. Then Clary, as you said in the beginning, couldn't couldn't end up sneaking in there and getting second. I don't think anybody's going to beat Ryan Lockyer tonight. I just have a feeling about him, the way he's looked. He talked to his dad a little while ago, and he was just on complete cruise control this morning. Didn't take a hard stroke. Now, Phelps looks so much better, though, at night, doesn't he? Oh, it's like night and day from what he looked like this morning. Not that he looked bad, but he just looked so cruise controlled that he didn't look sharp. And he looks sharp now. Phelps and Lane Wise have the slight lead as they switch strokes. Phelps again, after he got out of the pool, winning the gold in this event in Beijing, said he, that was it. It is so grueling of an event to train for that although Phelps was going to go for another Olympics, he might sacrifice his other events by training for this grueling event. But here he is in the 400 IM again, where he's the two time defending Olympic gold medalist. And Lockie is such a good backstroker. We'll see if he can gain some ground on Phelps. And Phelps is doing a nice job. That's Lockie right there. Larry and Clark think that's the lead. Ryan Lott did so much that third 
400. And that's what makes or breaks a great 400 IMR. For that matter, a 200 IMR is that brush stroke. And that's where Ryan Lochte was able to do it so well. And Lochte really, you know what? I think he let up. He didn't die. It looked like he died. I think he let up at the end. He's got a lot of races ahead of him. And I don't think Phelps gave it all either the last 25 meters or so. These guys are going to be much faster than London. Three fastest in the world this year, Lochte, Phelps, and Clary. But once again, Clary is on the outside as Phelps, who stepped away from this event. Back in it, Lochte wins it over Phelps. Lochte makes his third Olympics, Phelps his fourth Olympics. First male U.S. swimmer to ever go in four Olympics.